Welcome back. I hope you had some progress or made some progress in solving this, but whether you did or not, uh, here's how you do it. So we're going to relate uh, average velocity to the pressure gradient because that's the question that was asked. So the first part A was to find the average velocity based on a known pressure gradient, essentially. You're given pressure differences in lengths, etc. So we're going to use this equation as our dimensionless equation that's going to relate those two things. Uh, and so that's going to, you know, that's where we we'll start. We know that the dimensionless pressure gradient, of course, is the dimensionless pressure gradient. So that's dp dx with everything dimensionless. But p is, this is dimensionless p and this is dimensionless x. So as we showed last lecture, the dimensionless pressure gradient is the actual pressure gradient uh, times h and divided by rho, in, in our case, average velocity squared, because that's what we define the characteristic velocity to be. So that's uh, that. If we want an uh, actual pressure gradient, um, so G, therefore, is equal to delta P over L, which is, you know, dP dx here. Um, say minus dP this way. And then, uh, and then H over rho u bar squared. So the PDX, now this has been defined as P in minus P out, so we need a negative sign here uh, so that it goes, we want the pressure gradient will be negative if the, uh, the pressure is decreasing as it goes from in the positive x direction, so we need a negative sign the way we have defined this, which is weirdly P in minus P out uh, for, these, for these types of problems. So that's what we're going to do there. Um, and so that's my G, that's my, uh, you know, my actual uh, dimensionless G because I have my real dP dx delta P divided by L is my real dP dx times H rho u squared. So now I'm going to take that and set that equal to 12 over the Reynolds number. So I have delta P over L H over rho u bar squared equals uh, minus 12 over REH. I had minus here and here, so the minuses are going to cancel. And I'm going to solve for U. So I want to solve this for U. Um, so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to replace the Reynolds number so that the U becomes explicit. So I have delta P over L H over rho U bar squared equals 12 over U bar H over nu. The Reynolds number. All right, now I will rearrange everything for you to put U bar on one side or the other. I'll move obviously these U bars over here, I think. So let's do that. So I've got delta P over L on the left. I've got an H on the left. I'm going to leave the row on the left as well. I'm going to move U bar squared over to the right. So I've got 12 U bar squared over U bar H, and I can move the new up here. This U bar is going to cancel that squared term. So I've got, I'm going to pull that over to the left. I've got U bar. I'll just move everything first. Nu over H is equal to delta P over L H over rho. H is going to go over. U bar is equal to delta P H squared. I've got um, L still under that delta P. I'm going to move the 12 and I'm going to move the new, and I've got rho new. So that's pretty much where it is. U bar is equal to delta P over L times H squared over 12 rho new. All right, let's see. Make sure hopefully I got all that right. Looks pretty good. Delta P H squared L rho new. What happened to my 12? There's my 12. Yep, that looks fine. Okay, so now I'm going to um, put in all the numbers for this. So I've got U bar is equal to delta P, which I said was 1.25 newtons per meter squared. I've got H squared, 0 0.02 squared. I've got 7 meters for L. I've got my density. I said it was water, so 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. I've got the viscosity, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second for water. And I've got a 12. 
So that's my whole thing. So I'm going to pull all that into my calculator. And it should be 0 0.00595. So 0 equals 0 0.00595 or 5.95 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second. A nice slow velocity. Happy about that because this won't work if we, this is our laminar flow analysis. So if this doesn't come out laminar, uh, we're going to have to do a different analysis, which won't work at all for this example, because we're trying to show how this works. And this is all based on uh, so anyway, um, hopefully that's correct. I'm sorry, that's minus three, not three, there's a minus three there. All right, so hopefully that's good. And then we'll check our Reynolds number. So our Reynolds number here, based on H, you know, 5.95 times 10 to the minus 3 is my velocity times my H is 0 0.02 divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. And that gives me... 5.95 E3 negative times 0 0.02 divided by 1 E6 negative equals, uh, yeah, I get 119. So that's that's solidly laminar. So that should be okay. So I'm good. I'm in the laminar regime. That's just a check. Sorry. That's just a check to make sure that I'm not crazy using laminar flow theory. But happily, I designed the problem well enough, and this is laminar. So we found our, our average flow velocity. It's right here. Uh, 5.95 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second. Next time, we'll look at part B.